today to share a message, a message that's given us hope. And I want to ask you first, where would you put the pass rate for heaven? And where do you think the Bible puts the pass rate for heaven? Now some people tell me, it's down here, everyone gets in, everyone's in heaven. Some people say, it's, it's kind of just above zero, Hitler and that won't be there, so maybe just zero. Some people say, Pass rate for heaven, and this is a challenge for me. Bear my word for myself. It says you've got to be perfect. You see, heaven is perfect, so surely we have to be perfect, else we'd ruin it. You know the problem? My mum told me, I don't know if your mum's told you this as well, nobody's perfect. We're more than wrong. I want to tell you about a man in the Bible, and it's a man who hears a wonderful thing. He hears this. He hears this said to him, truly I say to you, today you'll be with me in paradise in heaven. This man, at that time, was dying on the cross. And this man was dying, he was a thief, he was dying on the cross because the Romans thought he was that bad. He was in this category down here. He didn't meet the pass rate for heaven. Like you and like me, he wasn't good enough. But Jesus said to him, you're going to be with me in heaven, why? And the reason was, next to him, Jesus was dying on the cross. Jesus was dying, not for his own wrongs. He was perfect, unlike you and like me. We read from the Bible, we never see him do anything wrong. What's mum's name? Does mum have a name, or you just call a thing? Now this time, tell me, I'm going to make it really round this time. I make it tall first, like this. <laughs> what I do, Rebecca, is I make three pots for children and adults, and let them have a go. And I give away my free book, because on page 91 it tells you when I was in the big world of football. And my life is empty, and I was at Man City you know playing for Well, it was a big hit. Well, it was a big hit. Yeah. 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 I'm just going to let now, Taylor Lee, I'm going to finish this off, and it's yours. Does your one want it? Does she want the pot? Well, I'm going to ask you. Yeah, she can. I'll make it next time. Just be deciding what shape she wants. See that there? Here, the prophets wrote the whole story of Jesus before he's ever born. How do you explain that? Look, we don't know the future. We can't guess the future. And the whole life of Jesus was written before he was born. Now look, what's good about Good Friday? How can we have sins forgiven? How can we have peace in God? Because on Good Friday, this is what happened. Now look at my picture. Remember the prophets? There's four of them here. One says they're going to pierce his hands and his feet. You see that in the picture? Did they pierce the Messiah's hands and feet? Yes, they did. Look, there. What about this one? He's going to die among evil men. 750 years before Jesus was born. Is he dying between evil men? Well, you tell me. This is Jesus. Is, are, these, are these guys evil? They were. That's why they're being crucified. You didn't like church. You didn't like going to there. So at the age of 19, what, what changed for you? What, what made you consider these things? Yeah, I think I just came to the end of myself, Daniel. I realized that, you know, the what. All the parties, all the things that this world says will make you happy, it didn't really. And I found that there was a, a longing for something more, really. Yeah, I wonder if there's anyone listening who's got the same experience. Uh, Joe's saying here, at the age of 19, gone out there, tried uh, all the fun parties and stuff. But at the end of the day, it was empty. It, it didn't last. You know, people could go out and get blind drunk. But then you wake up and you've got to deal with life. So what is really the purpose of life? You're saying you found that in Christ. I did, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, Joanna, you're a math teacher uh, from, sorry, not a math teacher. No, 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 Spanish, Spanish. Oh, Spanish, do apologies. Okay, hablo un poco. Muy uh, poco. Uh, yeah, okay. Anyway, so a Spanish teacher. Um, and then, Jack, what do you say? You said you're a water hygiene specialist. Yeah, specialist. I basically check water temperatures. Service mixing valves and clean right. and check cold water storage tanks. Okay, so if you've got a problem with the cold water storage, this is the man uh, to fix it for you. Now, uh, Jack, where are you from? 
Uh, Warrington. You're from Warrington, and right. um, you're a Christian, is that right? Yeah, yeah. And you've been a Christian all your life, or did you become a Christian? I've become a Christian in 2015, when I was 19. Right. All right, so this guy here, Joe, was 19 when you became a Christian. Yeah, yeah. Uh, were your parents Christians? Um, I believe my mum's a Christian now, my dad isn't, uh, but I'd, she wasn't when I was sure. kind of living. Okay, so were, did they used to take you to church, or did you believe the Bible, or any of this stuff about Easter? Yeah, so I, I, I've always believed in a God. Uh, I started going to church when I was about 11, 12. I made a profession when I was about 13, but I, I truly come to know the Lord Jesus Christ and repented of my sins when I was 19 years old. You were 19 years old. Yeah. Okay, now, for those going past, okay, you, you, you tried church, it didn't change your life. But when you said you, you turned to Christ, what about the wrong things you've done in the past? Are you, you sure you're forgiven for those? Yeah. Right. No lies, right? Not been paid to say this, okay? Now, what about you, Joanna? Are you sure of the wrong you've done in the past? Are you absolutely sure it's forgiven? I am, yes. Do you want me to elaborate on that? Yeah, go on, go on. So there's a verse in the Bible that says to us, if we confess our sins, he, God, is faithful and just to forgive them. And that's something that I've done for myself, so I'm confident that I am able to Right now, you said you said God says if we confess our sins. Now, some say, well, God just forgives me automatically. That's not the case. I don't you have believe to come so. To God and say, I believe we have to ask God for that forgiveness. The offer is to all, um, and those who accept it are those who will receive it. Okay, so you said you know that you've done wrong to forgive it, and you said you know you've done wrong. What about you, Joe? The stuff you did when you were trying all kinds of different things. Would you say you know you've forgiven? Yeah, I do, Daniel. Yeah, forgiven, clean, right. washed. Everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what does that feel like to, to have like a dirty life that's cleaned up? Is that that must be quite an awesome Yeah, it feels thing. very reassuring because the Bible's teaching us we're saved by grace. It's not what we do. We can't be a good boy or a good girl and make ourselves acceptable to God. It's all what Jesus did, so we're saved through him and, and I find that very reassuring just to hide behind Jesus. It doesn't mean that we can just go out and do what we want. Yeah. Because once we receive God, we, we get His Holy Spirit, which gives us new desires. But it is reassuring to know that God doesn't see me anymore. He sees the righteousness, the perfection, uh, all of Christ's perfect track record. He sees that when He looks at my life. Okay, I've just got one more question. If you've got any questions you'd like to ask these uh, three people, they're all saying it's Good Friday. It's good news because they're each saying they know for sure what they've done wrong has been forgiven. And uh, my question now is going to be about heaven. Okay, so listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. So, Jack, are you sure that you're going to go to heaven if you if you die? Are you sure of that? Yes. Okay? And you're not being paid to say this. Oh, no. no it's, pretty, it's pretty poor wages. Uh, I'm not getting paid either. This is my holiday. This is their holiday. But friends, if it's true, if it's true there's a God in heaven, if it's true you could be forgiven for your wrong, if you could be sure of heaven, would you be interested? If it's free... But it cost God everything, and it cost him the Lord Jesus Christ, who is his beloved son. So my biggest problem is I'm going to stand before God, and so will you, and one day you give account for your life. And friends, what are you going to say? What excuses are you going to give God? How do we find this life? The, uh, the book of Acts and chapter 16. There was a man called Paul. He used to go around different places uh, doing things like this, talking to people about Jesus Christ and all he'd done for them. On one occasion, he was arrested and thrown in jail. And an amazing thing happened that night. There was an earthquake in the jail, and Paul and his friends, their chains were loosed, and the jailer, the Roman jailer, came to them, fearing for his life, knowing that if the prisoners escaped, that would be the end of him. And he said to Paul, what must I do to be saved? Friends, do you know what the answer was? Do you know what you need to do? If you want to be saved, if you want to have your wrong forgiven, if you want to have eternal life. Paul gave him the answer in Acts chapter 16 and verse 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. People of Southport this afternoon, is that something you've done? Has there come a point in your life when you've recognised that there are things in your life that are wrong? Things that you're ashamed of? Things that you wish you'd never done and said and thought? Things maybe that you wish you had done and said and thought that you haven't. Okay, from uh, friends to Southport, it is Good Friday, isn't it? Yeah? And is that a day where we can all come and have a coffee in Southport? I can see a few people doing that. Is it a day to have hot cross buns? Yeah? Is it a day to crack open the Easter eggs and get all those goodies inside? Is it a day for 
Bunnies, he's the Easter bunnies. Is it all about that or is it about something else? Well, I want to talk to you today about four things. I want to talk about the worst thing, the worst news, the best gift, and the best news. The first thing I want to talk about is the worst thing. What do you reckon is the worst thing? So what do you think the worst thing in the world could possibly be? No idea, it's not. Do you know anything? What, what, what do you reckon the worst sin is that you could possibly commit? What do you reckon it is? Is it, uh, I don't know, is it lying? Is it lying? Is it something worse than that? Is it, is it stealing? Is it stealing from somebody? Robbing from somebody? Is it, is it murder? Is it murder? Is it, could it be abortion? You know, killing someone who doesn't even have the ability to defend themselves while they're in the world, while they're still in the womb? Is it abortion? Is it sexual immorality? Is that the worst sin in the world? You know? Is it is it homosexuality? Would you draw the line there and say, oh, that's one of the worst sins in the world? Is it what some of the things that we see going on in the world right now? Killing innocent people. Is that the worst sin in the world? Well, no, I'll tell you what I think is the worst sin in the world. I think the worst sin in the world is ignoring, something that many people do today, ignoring the gift of God in the Lord Jesus. So many people who celebrate Easter as a holiday, they look forward to having a day off work, but they will not go to church, they will not hear about Jesus, and they will ignore what Jesus has done on the cross. Because Jesus came and he died for my sins and your sins. And that's precious. And, and because God himself died for us, that cannot be ignored. So I believe the worst sin is to ignore God. It's to ignore the gift of Jesus. It's to just walk on by and say, no, Jesus is not for me. I'm not interested in what that man did 2,000 years ago. How can that affect my life? Friends, it can completely affect your life. You can have your life turned around with that news. So I believe the worst sin is rejecting God and rejecting what Jesus has done. What's the worst news? The worst news is that unless you realise that you're a sinner, you go into hell. It's an awful place. I don't want that for anybody. I'm here today, not getting paid for this and making an idiot of myself in the middle of South Block Town Centre because I care about people. Yeah, and I love people. And I don't want to see you guys going to hell. I don't want to see you going to lost eternity because I love people. And God loves you even more than I love you. He I, I, I'm not sure I'd be able to die for you, but Jesus did. He died for you because he loves you. The worst news is this, that if you don't accept that gift, you will spend forever and ever and eternity in hell. But Jesus can save you from that. That's the worst news. But the, the best gift is this. That's that Jesus came into the world to pay for all the wrong things that I've done so that I can be forgiven. That is the best <coughs> gift. And it's a free gift. You know, people, we're not trying to sell it to you today. It's free. And I think some people think they've got to work towards the salvation. There's, there's things that you have to do. And the reason why religion in the world is so popular, we've got all kinds of different religions, we're all thinking to ourselves. What's the right religion? What should I be following? Should I pick a bit of this? Should I pick a bit of that? A bit of Buddhism here, sprinkle a little bit of Hinduism over there. Why are there all these religions in the world? I'll tell you why. It's because people feel that they want to do something, or they've got to do something to get to heaven. But friends, it's a free gift. There is nothing we can do to get to heaven. We, we've got to get right with God, but we can get right with God through Jesus. He makes us right with God. We cannot make ourselves right with God. There's nothing we can do to get to heaven. Jesus has done it all when he died on the cross. And that's why we're celebrating here at Easter what Jesus has done for us. It's a free gift. You know, fourth, finally, it's the best news. This is the best news right now. I don't like switching on the news. I don't like watching the television because it's just doom and gloom, isn't it? Put your hands to be fed up for watching the BBC, fed up for watching ITV, absolutely. It's all doom and gloom, oh look at what's going on with coronavirus, look what's going on in the UK. And it's sad, it's depressing, but listen friends, on Good Friday... Now look, if a simple robot needs brains to make it, 
Why do you go to school and believe that you came out of nothing? If you're more advanced than any machine that needed minds to make it, answer that for a tenor. All right, let me tell you, Jesus, Jesus Christ says all men are liars. He says there's no evidence. Are you a liar? Yes or no? There's no evidence for God. Jesus says all men are liars. I'm a liar. Are you a liar? But in Israel, when were you born? What year? Well, just say what year you were born. 2005. 2005 years after which person in history? Peter Pan? No. Spider Man? Batman? Batman? Robin? Jesus Christ is the answer. He says it doesn't exist. He split time in two, AD and BC. Not only that, look at this. Madam, would you just come and stand here for a second? This man says we're talking rubbish. Stand here. Will you promise the people while this man shouts at me that you won't tell a lie? Speak, speak up. Has Jesus Christ changed your life? Yes or no? Yes. How do you know? How can you answer for us? It's not real. No, no, don't do that. Why do you think it's not real? You are. He thinks we're all silly. Ladies and gentlemen, the fool has said in his heart there's no God. Which of us is the fool? Who said there's no God? Who's this person? Everyone on Batman. Okay, so we've got Batman. Now, who is Batman's enemy? He's got a few. He's got a few. But do you know Batman's main enemy? Anyone know? Joker. Joker, okay. So we've got Batman and Joker. That's the first one. Well done. Next one. Who's this person? Anyone recognise this person? I've been told I look like him. I don't think so. <laughs> Anyone know who's this person? Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Now, who's Harry Potter's enemy? There's a few you could say, but there's one. Some people don't name his name. But does anyone know who this person could be? Voldemort. That's right. We've got Harry Potter and Voldemort, Batman and Joker. Can you see what's happening here? But people say, oh, Josh, you're Christianity now. It's just like a crutch so you can get through life with no trouble. It's just so you can get through the day and trust Jesus and uh, be a nice crutch for you. But no, he's not a crutch to get me through life. He's a shield to get me through death. Because when I die, what I deserve is God's judgment. I do go in a box, sir, but after that, what will happen? Does my life just end at the grave and all of this is just meaningless and for nothing? The Bible says no, there is something after the grave. But here's the thing, the thing that I deserve after the grave is my own judgment for my own sin. But here's why Jesus is like a shield. Jesus died in my place. Like a substitute, he took the bullet for me. You must have a new start in your life. It's like being born again. So, Chris, that up to you when you're about 15. Uh, do you remember roughly where you were, you were a young, young child? Yeah, I was a young child when I made that commitment. Yeah. Okay. Well, interestingly, you weren't born a Christian, and nobody can be born a Christian. Hey, have you heard this? God has no grandchildren. God has no grandchildren. Think about that. God has no grandchildren. He only has children. Because only those people who come to him and say, God, I, I'm in a mess, but I want to be forgiven and saved, they're God's children. Okay, you're not God's child automatically. God has no grandchildren. It's something that you have to decide for yourself. So in your family, God has no grandchildren. So you had to make a decision, didn't you, to become a Christian? I did, yeah. Now, are you sad about that? Are you sad about becoming a Christian? Life's boring now. Oh, no, what a terrible thing. definitely not. I am so happy to be a Christian. I don't know where I would find my purpose or my hope in life if it weren't for knowing Jesus. Now, what about you, Chris? Are you sad that when you were 15, you became a Christian? What a boring life you've had. No, I'm definitely not sad that I became a Christian. No. You know what? I'm not sad either. I became a Christian. Uh, I was about 11 years old, grew up in the Church of England. And uh, it was interesting, but I never understood what Jesus did for me on the cross until I was 11 years old. And I said, God, thank you that Jesus came, died for me, and rose again. And my life changed. I remember I stole from my parents, and I lied about him. And I was young at the time, but my conscience bothered me. And the Bible says, you have a conscience, I have a conscience. It's the part of us that tells us when we've done right or wrong. 
And that conscience, bad conscience I had from stealing as a child, it bothered me up to the point when I became a Christian. And that night when I became a Christian, suddenly I realized I'm free of that. Jesus paid for it on the cross, it's gone, and I had peace with God, and I was so excited. So I'm glad that I'm a Christian. You're glad you're a Christian, and so are you as well. Okay, now we're gonna pan over to John. Religion will not help us because all of our good deeds are like filthy rags. No matter how much good we try and do, it's never enough, and ultimately, we still do bad things. And one thing I saw on a TV program recently, someone in the TV program said, thoughts are not evil. But you see, the Bible says even thoughts are evil because God knows what we're thinking. And so even the things we think can be evil, if we lust after someone, if we hate someone, that is evil and that is before God. And God cannot accept us into heaven because of that. My friends, I want to tell you the key to life is Jesus. See, people go to money thinking that will satisfy them, that they'll, get, that they'll get enough wealth and they'll finally feel fulfilled. They think relationships will fulfill them, think if they get enough love, if someone could just accept them for their flaws, that will be enough. People think experiences, if they get a big enough adrenaline rush, that will fulfill them. Or religion, if they feel good enough about themselves, that will fulfill them. But the truth is, all these things are empty. No matter how hard you try to find satisfaction, the key to life in these things, they will all let you down. But Jesus will never let you down. Jesus said he came that we may have life and have it to the full. Jesus came, uh, he came from the wealth of heaven and he came to give to us who were poor sinners. He came that we might be loved as well because Jesus loved us, that's why he came. He came to die on the cross for the wrong things that we do. And he came, actually Jesus was really against the religious leaders. The religious leaders were all about trying to make themselves look good and look good in other people's eyes. But Jesus said no. He said we've all done wrong things. But Jesus himself was perfect and that's why he died on the cross to pay for the wrong things we've done for all our sins so that we could be made right with him. Jesus is the key to life. Murder mystery. This is the, this is the world's greatest murder mystery. I don't know if you like to watch uh, things like Death in Paradise, um, but you know how the story goes. Uh, there's a body being found and uh, there's a body, so we've got to find out who who done it. And uh, I want you to help me uh, today. Now, if you're an atheist, I especially would invite you to come and listen. If you're agnostic, come and listen. Because what I'm about to tell you, you will not hear anywhere else. You won't hear it on social media. You won't hear it on the BBC. Now, do you prefer evidence or prejudice? Do you, do you just want to carry on with believe what you want, or do you want to listen to some evidence? So if you're an atheist and if you're an agnostic, I just invite you to stop for a minute. We're going to look at some evidence, okay? Now, if you just want to say, well, Jesus obviously didn't rise from the dead, I'm going home, that's fine. But I'd like to listen to some evidence. Um, now, myself, I'm a doctor. I used to work in the Children's Hospital in Old Hay, so I'm not exactly a dimbo. And I spent the last couple of weeks looking at the evidence for the resurrection. So, if you'll give me a minute or two, I'd like to share it with you. I think it's amazing. I think it shows beyond doubt that this man was amazing. So, he was there at the cross, and he said, This man was surely innocent. He just put him to death. But he said, Jesus was innocent. And then he said, this man was the son of God. Now that's not my words, that's my first witness. He said he was dead. I made sure he was dead on the cross. So Jesus lived and Jesus died. Now here's my first positive witness. Now this is my hostile witness, he's not on my side. Here's my first positive witness. Her name's Mary. Now does anybody know what her second name is? Mary what? Smith. Mary Smith, yeah good guess, but it's not Mary Smith. Okay, if you're an atheist, if you're agnostic, okay, I want to give you some evidence for the Bible. Here's my first, Mary Magdalene. Now, do you remember, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. What did Mary Magdalene go to the tomb to do? Did she go to say, oh, I wonder if Jesus is risen from the dead. I'll go along and look. Is that what Mary Magdalene did? She didn't, you know. She took spices because she knew Jesus was dead and she was going to anoint the body. So she didn't think he was alive. He's not on my side, but this is one of the guards. See, after they buried Jesus, Mary saw where they buried Jesus, the women saw where they put Jesus' body. After that, the chief priests got together and said, hang on a minute, this man Jesus said he's gonna be alive again. So let's make sure he stays dead. Let's make sure they don't steal the body. So they put a guard. They put a guard up outside the tomb. I'm gonna give you the best evidence that Jesus rose from the dead and the best evidence that the Bible is true. Are you ready for this? 
in 1000 BC, 1000 BC, the prophet said, a Messiah is going to come, he's going to die, and he's going to rise again. Now look, if you're an atheist, could you explain that to me? How did this prophet in the Old Testament of the Bible, how did he say 1,000 years before Jesus came, he said, the Holy One is going to die, but his body won't rot in the grave. That's what he said. Look, you can look at it in the Bible. It's in Psalm 16, verse 10. Because this is the cross he was crucified on. They crucified him on an X-shaped cross. Now, do you think that's myth? If that's myth, how come it's, it's endured all these years till today? You see, it's based on truth. So Andrew was willing to lay down his life knowing that Jesus really was alive from the dead. Would you lay your life down if you knew it was a lie? Friends, I don't think that's convincing. Now, here's another one. Do you know, 500 people saw Jesus at one time. He appeared to people when they were inside. He appeared to people living outside. He appeared to people in the early morning. He appeared to people in the evening. He appeared to people in the middle of the day. Jesus showed himself to many different people after he rose from the dead. None of us are perfect. None of us ever will be. And we need to come to God, not bringing our own good works, but clothed in his righteousness. There's a verse in the Bible that says this, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. God made him who knew no sin, that's Jesus, to be sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. How do we receive that? By responding to the invitation, by coming to the Lord Jesus and saying, I'm sorry for the wrong in my life. I thank you for dying and rising again for me. And I want your forgiveness. Friends, have you done that? Have you done that? Talking about a wedding feast, and he said these words, Come, for everything is now ready. Friends, the Lord Jesus Christ has done all that is necessary for people like you and people like me to know forgiveness of our wrong, eternal life with him in heaven instead of the punishment we deserve. Because he's not a dead savior, is he? He's not a savior at all, it's just that. You never thought that. You see, the good news is, he offers you a free gift of salvation. But with gifts, if I offer you a gift and you don't take it, whose fault's that? Right. Is there any football fans here at the moment? Any football fans? No? There's a football fan there, one fan, another one behind the camera. Thank you very much, Johnny. Um, now, I'm a football fan as well. Who would like to have a guess at which football team I support? Anyone like to have a guess? Uh, it's not Liverpool. You get, uh, would you like to have another guess? Accrington Stanley! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not Accrington Stanley. Um, I'll give you a little bit of a flash of the, uh, of the colour. All right, just a little, little flash in the cup oh, there, right? Rexon. <laughs> it's not Rexon. I'll spell it out for you. You might be actually on the right wavelength. Um, this might get a few uh, few people getting a bit cross here, but... Uh, M-A-N, U-T-D, United are the team for me with a nick. Now, Paddy Wack, give a dog a ball. Why don't City get lost? Oh, you're getting worried then, weren't you? Um, <laughs> yeah, I am, mate. I'm afraid to say it. I'm a Man United fan. There we go. And now, now oh. everyone's walking off thinking, what is he going? <laughs> We're going to see somebody killed today, I think, on the streets of uh, Merseyside. Uh, but no, why am, I, why am I here? Well, I want to talk to you about a certain guy. Uh, one of my all-time favourite players. Anyone want to have a guess at one of my all-time favourite players? It's, without looking, his name is on the back of my shirt. Anybody want to have a guess? Without without looking out, you can't look. You can't look. Anybody want to? Say? Well, I, I believe he's Don't the great Ronaldo. I believe he's the greatest player of all time. Do you, sir? Yeah. <laughs> the greatest player of all time. Yeah, it is, of course. Zoom. Ronaldo. I believe he's the greatest player of all time. He's just an amazing player. He's got more goals than anybody else. More goals than Pele. And when United, my team, signed Cristiano Ronaldo, I thought fantastic. Here we go, he's going to save us. We're going to start winning things now because it's been a pretty miserable existence been a Man United fan for the last 10 years, to be honest. And I thought, right, at last. And everyone thought, this is it, Ronaldo's arrived, the saviour's come, he's, he's returned, and we're going to win some trophies. It's not turned out like that, has it? It's not turned out like that, has it, He's done, he's done, I say, I didn't even know, I just want to go to watch your match today later. Oh, dear, I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> hey, there's another United fan there, so I like to see. But yeah, it's 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 not turned out the way that we wanted. We are guaranteed to win no trophies this year because we're out 
of every competition. I think it's even mathematically impossible to win the league at this moment in time, isn't it? I think it's like eight games left, eight times three, 24. We're 24 points behind the leaders, Man City. It's not going to happen, is it? Absolutely impossible. So the thing is, I'm trying to say is this. We thought Ronaldo was going to be the saviour of Man United. Cristiano Ronaldo has not been the saviour that we all thought he was going to be. He's let us down. And shall I tell you, people will let you down. You look at our leaders, you look at Boris Johnson. Has he let us down? You are? I'm a lost. <laughs> this gentleman's asking me I'm a lost because I'm in, I'm in Merseyside wearing a United shirt. And we're just trying to get through this like five minutes off without getting uh, stoned or tomatoes thrown at me. But no, people let you down. Boris Johnson, the leader of our country, he has let us down, doesn't it? We all thought he was going to do a great job when we voted for him. I'll be honest with you, I voted for him. I'm going to get more stones thrown at me now, aren't I? Uh, he delivered on something I wanted him to deliver on. But then after that, it's gone steadily downhill, rapidly downhill. And he's not doing a great job. And even he has not followed his own rules, has he? And he's in trouble now. And he might not be the Prime Minister by the end of the week, the way things are going. I brought with me an amazing computer. Look at this computer. Look at that. Now listen, this computer is my life, right? You tell me one thing that I've done in my life. Some of you have never met me. Look at this computer, folks. Very advanced, right? This is my life. You have a guess at one thing I've done in my life. Anybody want to guess? Would you like to guess, sir? Anything. Sorry, go back to sleep, sir. <laughs> Madam, would you like to guess? Say it again. Deep sea diving. Deep sea diving. Uh, <laughs> deep sea diving. <laughs> do you think I have? Why do you say deep sea diving? Do I look like a fish? <laughs> Why do you go for deep sea diving? Something unusual. Yes, it is unusual. Okay, well, you're wrong. I've never been deep sea diving. I've been shallow sea diving, it's called having a bath. <laughs> Tell me one thing I've done in my life, everybody. This is what's happened in my life, get ready. Isn't that good? Shot. Lifter. Lifter. Right, that shot lifter. Now, you're nearly right. You get thinking as well, I'm doing things on here that you think I've done wrong. All right, now you're nearly right. It weren't in a shop, but it was in my brother's room. And it is money. The money's right, but watch, watch, watch. I've done some stealing, watch. I have. I've heard somebody one day hit a fellow with a golf club. How about that? He ended up in hospital, no doubt. You see, what's what happens, watch. Now, if I've shoplifted or stolen, or hurt somebody, or told a lie, why can I write it on here, folks? Why can I write it on here and then go? Why can I do that? Look at that. Now, what do you reckon is the connection between the things I've done wrong and that event? I mean, everybody talks about that event. What is it? It's when a man was crucified, isn't it? Yeah? Do you know what the connection is? I'll tell you. The things I've done wrong were placed on him. So he carries the can, gets punished for me. I get the pardon when I ask him to forgive me. Now, I'll tell you something. If you're really clever, you'll get this ready. There's only one thing on here I can write that God can't obliterate. If I write it on, nobody can obliterate it. Do you know what it is? No, but there's one thing that you can do in your life you can't get rid of. One thing, there's only one, do you know what it is? So I'm saying I've told lies, my friend there told me I was shop the shoplifter, and the lady there said I'd hurt people, and I'd punch people. And I said, I've done these things, ready? And if you, what did you say, what was your answer? Stealing, yeah, because I used to steal on Thursdays. I did. And David, my buddy, brother, got paid on Wednesday. I didn't go on Tuesday because the money wasn't there. I went on Thursday and I used to steal. But watch folks, the reason I can is because of this. That's the reason. But listen, there's only one thing I can write on here and no matter who you are, 
it can't be obliterated. Do you remember there was a man in America and he seemed to have a lot of influence and his name was um, Bill. Do you remember Bill and Monica? Do you remember that? Exactly, he had all that power. Committed adultery, didn't he? But if you write adultery on here, it can be wiped out. But there's only one thing on here I can write that you can't get shut up in your life. Or not even God can get shut up it for you. Do you know what it is? Come on, you're meant to be bright around Southport. My kindergarten can get this. I'll tell you, it's to reject forgiveness. So let's say I'm dying of cancer, right? So I'm here. And I go and see my doctor. And the doctor says, how did you come here today, Mr. Commons? And I said, in my Volvo, it's parked outside. That's meant to be funny. Okay. I said, because I don't feel well. And he says, there's a cure for you. And I said, nah, I don't want it. What would happen? Do you think in about a year's time, when I drop dead, I can turn to the doctor or get one missing? Why didn't you help my brother, says my sister? Why didn't you help my brother? It's not the doc's fault, is it? Whose fault is it for not taking the cure? If you can get, are you six? Seven? A hundred? How many? Are you in? I was coming to it, give me a chance. <laughs> well, here, listen, there's only one thing on here that God can't get rid of in your life. There's only one thing. Have you, do you know what it is? Do you know? What do you think it is? I'll tell you. It's this. Watch it. It's to say that to God. If you say no, do you know what happens? He can't forgive you, can he? If you don't want the cure, how can he forgive you? You see, folks, God does love you. He loves me. He loves this gentleman, this lady.